So we're back with Satesh Patel. This is our second episode. Satesh is the author of Succeed by Failing. He's also a friend of mine, and he has been kind enough to spend some time with us here in my home telling us about this story of how he went from being a first-generation American to being an extremely successful businessman, facing some challenges that led to what he would describe as failure, but using that to leverage his way up to success. So Satesh, thanks so much for coming back to us again today. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what your aspirations were when you finished high school? In the last episode, you spoke with us about excelling in math and science. What were your plans after high school? Yeah, thanks, Michael. So I knew growing up, like I said, you know, where my strengths were. I knew that I was good at math. I was good at science. So I wanted to emulate my father, who was also a pharmacist. And I knew that kind of taking that and taking where what I was good at and really staying on that path would lead me to becoming a pharmacist. So there were some things that happened like in elementary school, junior high, junior high, for example. Um, you know, one of the things I got for Christmas was a chemistry set. And I know it might be kind of an odd thing to ask for as a kid, but because I was just so fascinated by chemistry that that's kind of my, that, was, that ended up being my play toy, right? So it was just a lot of these little things being, you know, inspired by science, being inspired by my father, you know, and just really being good at what I was good at, just staying on that path. And eventually what happened was I met with a high school counselor and he told me, he's like, listen, if you're good at these things and you like enjoying, enjoy doing these things, maybe becoming a pharmacist is the right career path for you. And I took that to heart and I said, you know what? I think you're right. And that's the direction that I headed in. So when you knew you were wanted to be a pharmacist, what is the process for that? Like, did you have to go to undergraduate school and then to graduate school and then to postgraduate school? Help us understand what does it take to pursue a pathway to a, a science degree like that? Or Sure. So there's there's different programs, different ways of going about it. Um, at the time when I was applying to colleges, a lot of colleges actually had a direct program and what you could do through the direct program, you could bypass getting an undergraduate degree and go directly into an accelerated program that allows you just to stay focused on what the undergrad requirements are. And then the grad requirements are all kind of encompassed in one, right? So a lot of people might end up spending eight years on a total degree doing four years undergrad, four years doing grad. I was able to cut out two of those years. So I was able to gain my entire degree at one shot in six years. And that was a doctor of pharmacy. And how was your experience in school? Where did you, where did you attend school and what was your experience like? Was it as challenging as somebody like me would think pharmacy studies would be or was it a breeze for you? Oh, it was definitely challenging. That's for sure. Yeah, I mean, everywhere from the transition of going from high school to uh, college. Where you know, did you I, go to I, college? So I went to college at Rutgers and Rutgers is, it's a state college located out in New Jersey, multiple campuses, you know, hundreds of thousands of students, really well known on the East Coast. And I grew up a kid in California, Southern California to be more specific and ended up going to, you know, the Northeast. So it was definitely a culture shock for me. It was a big transition point. You know, I was there basically by myself learning to meet people, learning to kind of integrate into that environment. So there were a lot of challenges, but luckily, you know, I met some great people along the way and, you know, had some help with friends and, you know, I was able to just continue going down that path. And it wasn't the easiest, you know, going from high school to college in terms of the academics, it was a lot different. So, you know, in my first year was definitely a struggle, but once I started getting the hang of, you know, like how to how to do exams and how to study and how to go to classes and so forth in college, I, I started to pick it up and I got a lot better. What were some of the classes that you took in high school that prepared you to do well in the college science and math classes? So since pharmacy really is a science and math background, you know, in high school, it was a focus on exactly that, you know, so we're looking at like chemistry and biology and uh, different classes in mathematics and, you know, even on the SATs, trying to focus on the math portion rather than so much the verbal. It, at that time, that was really what the requirements were. So I knew those were the areas that I needed to stay focused on. And when you, you were in, in college at, at Rutgers for how many years? Six years was my program. So after six years, tell us about what you did. What were your intentions? What did you want to do with your, with that pharmaceutical degree? 
Yeah, so I was, you know, I was really lucky. I graduated at 23 and I had my doctorate. So, you know, I felt really fortunate that I was coming out. I mean, I was still a kid, 23. You still have no idea what the real world is like. But it was still cool being able to leave, you know, have all this experience as friends, network in New Jersey, and then being able to come back out west and really starting a new life again. So I basically wanted to come back and I wanted to either go into the pharmaceutical industry or work in pharmacies. Eventually, I was thinking, you know, I'd start working at a pharmacy and then gain some background, some experience, and then move into the industry. And a lot of people do that. It's a pretty easy path, right? So that was my initial intention. I came back and to get into a pharmacy, you have to have your board. You have to pass your license and it's basically two, two exams that you have to take. One is a national exam and one's a state exam. So I spent the first few months back home, really just at home, focused and doing whatever I could do to get those boards out of the way as fast as possible. And what was your plan to do with your career, to go work in a pharmacy like one of the big chain pharmacies? Or did you have an aspiration of starting your own pharmacy? What were you going to do? Yeah, so I wanted to start at a chain pharmacy, you know, kind of just learn the ins and outs and the ropes of all the medications. You know, when you're in college, a lot of it is just so textbook. I wanted to see a lot more real life, what actually the medications are, interact with patients and so forth. I wanted to learn the background really well. And then my plan was after I learned the background to move into the industry. And when I say the industry, like in the actual corporate world of pharmaceuticals, so like these big drug companies like Novartis, Pfizer, these guys, you know, that was kind of my plan. So you wanted to go work for one of the big drug manufacturers in what capacity? Do you wanted it to create medicines or, or what were you thinking? No, so it's, there's many different departments that are in the pharmaceutical industry. So really at that time, it was just trying to get my foot in the door and just start whatever department I can get into and learn the ropes, you know, move up the ladder, do whatever I had to do to keep going. And then eventually as time went, I gained more experience, you know, I can move to different departments and different parts of the industry. You seem like you had a pretty disciplined path from studying hard in high school, junior high school, high school, then pursuing a pharmaceutical degree, bypassing the regular traditional route of getting an undergraduate degree, a master's degree, and then a doctorate. You just went for the entire project in one swing. When you say that you had this plan of getting out of grad uh, of your pharmacy program and going into uh, a CVS like environment of a, of a big chain pharmacy and then going to the drug. What was your trajectory of time? Did you have like a five year plan, a 10 year plan? What were you thinking? So I was thinking two years in retail pharmacy. I felt that that would be enough. And, you know, I was actually going to try to do I was since I was just you know, a kid at the time, not married or anything. I was going to try to put in as many hours as I could, even if I had to take, you know, one full-time and one part-time job, maybe for the weekends. So my plan, it was in that two-year span, two-year span just to work as much as possible. So, you know, even if it was seven days a week. So two years in, your plan was two years in a big box store, then transition right from there into the Pfizer's or or the, uh, uh, pharmaceutical industry and how long did you expect to stay in that industry so I wanted to stay in the industry forever that was going to be my career path you know and I had my degree behind me I had some experience behind me and then once I got into the corporate world my plan was to work 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 climb up the ladder move into whatever departments I could move into gain as much experience as I could and really just climb up as much as I could but at that same time you'd mentioned that earlier before you left when you were still in junior high or high school your father was starting his own venture did you have any plans or aspirations of working together in the family business at that stage in your life no so not at that time you know it, it's it's very interesting because I was really just focused on what I wanted to do with my boards, pass my exams, get into a pharmacy. I was calling pharmacies and applying, getting interviews. So I was really, really focused on that side of things. But what ended up happening was my dad was, you know, his, his company had grew quite a bit. He was up to maybe 12, 13 employees and he needed some help. So at this time I was still studying for my boards. I didn't have a job because they wouldn't hire me until I passed my exams. So I said, you know what, okay, you know, I can work part-time just helping my dad out at the company and then stay the other part in time and just keep studying and taking my exams until I can get a new job. And you you said your dad had about 12 employees. What kind of revenues do you think he was doing at that stage? 2007 was around that time frame. I want to say somewhere around 1.9, 1.8 million. 
in and, sales. And, but there did come a time when you transitioned to work with your dad. What stage was that? Yeah, so it was right at that time frame. And kind of back going back to what I said, he he needed some help. And that help was, there, there were some new regulatory laws that were coming into place. And he didn't have anybody that had the stature that can really help him take the company from where it is today or where it was at that time to the next stage to be in compliance with those laws. So he had asked ask for my help. So we've been talking with Satesh Patel, the author of Succeed by Failing. He's been talking with us about what it means to really transition your life from coming in as an American citizen, first generation, and yet preparing for a life of success. And we're going to hear about the phenomenal success in the third episode of this program, where he's going to tell us about taking his company from effectively a $2 million company to what it later became. But we're also going to hear about some of those setbacks. So we encourage you to stick around. I am Michael Sanchez with Prison Professors. We are really grateful to Satesh for helping us understand that even if somebody has failed, they can still continue pursuing success. Back with just one more episode in a moment.